there is a longstanding debate among you know, biologists, but also anthropologists about whether race is real or a social construct. And uh, yeah, I can feel my blood pressure go up simply broaching the topic because it's a third rail. And, and it, you know, it makes perfect sense that it's a third rail because in the 20th century, the Nazis committed a genocide based partly on this belief. And many governments, including the U.S. government, instituted eugenics policies. You know, my my, uh, my great-grandmother was, was sterilized in Puerto Rico as a result of, of one of these policies in the eugenics era. Uh, nevertheless, I think people of goodwill ought to be able to ask the question, which is, given that when our ancestors migrated out of Africa, many groups of them were geographically isolated for long enough to develop all of the all of the differences in appearance that make someone like me look different than than someone like you. And you know, the question whether that isolation was was long enough and the the evolution divergent enough to justify biologically valid categories, whether we want to call them races or populations, um, you know, that it seems people of goodwill who are not Nazis ought to be able to ask that question and explore its, its implications, whether me- medical or, or, or otherwise. So what do you make of that debate? Okay. I, I mean, I quite agree with you. I, I think the, the, the fact that such appalling things were done by the Nazis and by the eugenic sterilization movements in the United States in the early part of the 20th century and so on. Um, the fact that that happened uh, doesn't nullify the validity of the concept of race. I mean, it's obvious mm. there are geographically separated groups of humans who who have um, d- different um, genetic clusters in common. Now, what is true is that the variance uh, between between humans, between different different races, is much less than the variance within within races. In other words, um, well, one, one way it's been put is that if you wiped out um, all of humanity except one subpopulation, most of the variation would be preserved. In other words, most of the available human variation is present in all different races. But that doesn't mean that race is invalid. Race is a, is a valid concept. It is real. There really it are differences which are correlated with each other, skin color, shape, but various, various different things, blood groups. All these things are correlated with each other. And so it, I think it's nonsense to say that race is a social construct. Race is a real biological phenomenon. Um, the important thing is not to base any decisions, to base any policies upon that, which I think that's truly wicked. And that's what was wicked about the Nazis and was wicked about the uh, eugenic sterilization movements of the uh, 1920s and so on. Yeah, so, so the way I view this, and you know, I, I've looked at papers that have been written ever since the genome was sequenced uh, a couple decades ago, which have allowed scientists to look at a representative sample of genomes from all across the world, identify the locations in the genome where people have different genes, because most spots in the genome were all the same. But isolating those spots which vary, coming up with an index of similarity where my and my sister's genome would score as very highly similar whereas mine and yours, for instance, would score as relatively different. And then doing a standard clustering analysis to see how clustered the data are. And you know, on, on a pot, many people are going to be listening to this. So if you're not familiar with what it means for there to be a clustering analysis. I, I am familiar. No, no I know. <laughs> believe I me, I, I know you are. I'm, ta- I'm speaking oh, to my, sorry, to my listeners. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> I, I just want to ensure that they know what we're <clears throat> talking about. You know, um, imagine, you know, imagine you were measuring people's height and weight, just two variables. 
and you were to measure everyone in America and plot them on X, Y graph where say like X is the height and Y is the weight, you probably wouldn't see all that much clustering. It would just look like a mess of evenly distributed dots. Now say you were to do the same thing, but just look at a class of kindergartners and the NBA. Now you're going to find two completely separate clusters where the kindergartners are going to be clustered in a circle around here and the NBA is going to be over here and there's going to be no overlap. And then in a third scenario, you might have a group that clusters but has significant overlap in the clusters that are nevertheless visible. And from the papers I've looked at, race or or populations tend to look like that third scenario where there is visible clustering in the data, but significant overlap, no discrete boundaries, so that tens or, or maybe hundreds of millions of people will be more genetically similar to some members of other races than to some people in their own race. That's certainly true. Yes, undoubtedly. Yeah. But there will be certain characteristics like skin color, which, which, will, be, which will separate out ge- uh, geographical pop- populations. Mo- most mm. characteristics won't, but, but certain things will. Uh, and the, you will find correlated characteristics which will do, which will do that. There, there's a separate question here, which is whether discussion of these kinds of issues can actually cause harm to society. This is a, you know, is everything true worth discussing or worth amplifying? And there was one set of studies that really brought this question to my attention recently by a researcher named Brian Donovan, where he took a group of eighth or ninth graders, presented them with a passage on sickle cell which essentially said that black people are more likely to get sickle cell for these reasons and then presented them with an identical question uh, an identical passage that talked about sickle cell in, in race neutral terms that just said these many americans get sickle cell because you know their ancestors were from regions of the world that were had lots of malaria so there was one race neutral version version of the passage and one that was framed in terms of race and they were both true. And then he tested those two sets of kids as to whether they believed race was a sort sort of essential character trait and whether racial inequality was due to genetics and found that there was a significant difference in the group that has ju- that had just been that had just been read the racialized or the, the one that was framed racially, which would suggest that, you know, at, at least it's possible that talking about these facts in a way that, that puts at the forefront, the racial differences, even if true could result in a net increase in beliefs about, racial difference and racial essentialism that we all want to minimize. So I guess the basic question is, are there things that are true, but not worth discussing? And how do you, how do you deal with that? I didn't quite understand uh, the problem with the sickle cell case, because um, for example, if um, doctors uh, need to to know whether somebody's likely to have sickle cell, they, I mean, to, to know, mm-hmm. I mean, skin color will, will be correlated with the probability of get, getting sickle cell, mm-hmm. so having sickle cell. Right. So is there, is there a problem with that? I don't really get, understand, it, or is it just that it raises the consciousness of people in a way that's superfluous, that's unnecessary? Yes, it, it would be the second <laughs> thing. There's no problem with the fact as stated. It's that on a secondary test, the kids that were given the passage that way, would answer separate questions uh, and, and score high on measures of racial essentialism, right? Like the notion that, you know, races have discrete essences that are shared by all members of the race and, and not others and, and other problematic beliefs. 
Yes, yeah, so it, it's it's of a piece with those psychological studies where subjects are primed by mm-hmm. a story, and then that changes their attitude to a different point. Right. Yes, I mean, I, well, you asked the more general question: Are there some things in science that we should not study? Mm-hmm. It was that was the more general question that you you were asking? Yes. I suspect that that's there are yes. I mean, I think I think that there are certain questions that um, it it's not it's not worth studying because there's it would not it wouldn't affect anything we do whatever we find out about in in the in the, in those subjects mm-hmm. so they should be irrelevant they should not uh, they shouldn't um, impinge on anything that we do mm-hmm.